Tesla CEO Elon Musk is not shy about making boastful claims. In this video, I'll evaluate the company's latest comments, including a shocking statement from Elon Musk, who said that he believes Tesla will be by far the most valuable company in the world, and it won't even be close. We'll review those comments here in this video, as well as several other statements made that by Tesla's management that every Tesla stock investor should know. So let's take a look at these details. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so one of the major selling points for Tesla is the autonomous, or I should say supervised self-driving. And Elon Musk saying that a vast majority of people have no idea that Tesla could drive itself. So especially for something like the Model 3 or Model Y, if you purchase the FSD, it can pretty much drive itself so long as the weather conditions are permitting that there isn't rain or fog or really bright sunshine and you're sitting at the wheel and touching the wheel every few moments when the company, uh, when the car has you touch it because of regulators. They don't want you to be asleep at the wheel or not paying attention because there's very, very many situations that the car cannot navigate. And so it needs you to step in and do something in a moment. But for, you know, some cases you can, you know, if your commute to work is in a relatively simple area with no big changes, no construction, or there isn't any rain or anything like that, you can have the Tesla help you drive to work but you still have to be sitting there and you can't be doing something different. So I don't know what value this adds. I mean, if you're going to be sitting in the car anyway and you have to pay attention and you can't be doing things like answering emails or doing work on a laptop, then, you know, what's the value of, you know, like, okay, your hands won't have to be on the steering wheel all the time. You can rest your hands. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't want this in my car i wouldn't pay thousands of dollars for this for my car uh i don't think that i need to pay thousands of dollars to help me drive but i understand that many individuals like this technology and they think it's cool and they want to have this technology so you know that's uh kudos to tesla for developing this and being able to sell it and have people pay thousands of dollars for this incremental service. And they say that the take rate for FSD has improved substantially, especially after the 1010 robo taxi event. And this is something that Tesla has been really good at marketing these types of events and turning them into increased sales and increased stock price. Even if there isn't anything really tangible that comes out of these events, just the marketing and the hype around it does a good job of generating sales for the company. People visit Tesla's website. People make videos about Tesla. People watch the presentation. And some of those people go on to make purchases. And that's all great for Tesla. That all makes it worthwhile spending the millions of dollars that they had to spend to put on this event in the highly controlled environment and everything that had to be orchestrated to put this event on. It must have cost the company millions and millions of dollars. But the resulting sales increase and the stock price increase that led into the event makes these events worthwhile for the company. Very few companies do what Tesla does in that they continue to try and share their pipeline of products that they have in development. They're always trying to share with you, look at this thing that we're working on and look at how much progress we're making, right? You don't see companies like, let's say, Apple. You don't see them always sharing with you the things that they're working on to try and get you to buy their stock and inflate their stock price, right? They just work on their products and then they launch their products. Uh, they try to keep them as secretive as possible because of the competitive disadvantages that come along with revealing your product cycle. But for Tesla, it's more important for them to reveal these things 
the competitive disadvantage is offset by the hype and marketing and increase in stock price that it creates. So for them, that offsetting factor is worthwhile. They don't mind having that competitive disadvantage because it gets their stock price to trade at these ridiculously inflated valuations. And I can share with you here, you can look at Tesla's price to free cash flow ratio. It's at 517 compared to, let's say, GM, which is at 43, and Ford, which is at 8. Or if you think of Tesla as an AI company, you can compare it to NVIDIA, Microsoft, and Alphabet. NVIDIA is trading at a price to free cash flow of 74, Microsoft at 42, Alphabet at 34. So Tesla is more than 10 times as expensive as most of the companies that you would compare it to if you're using the price to free cash flow as your valuation metric. If you're using the forward price to earnings as your valuation metric, you would get a similar story. Tesla's price to earnings forward ratio of 80 is more than twice that of Nvidia at 34 and way more than Alphabet at 19 and Microsoft at 27. And if you compare with car companies like Ford and GM at 5.8 and 5.1 respectively, Tesla's more than 15 times as expensive as those. So this strategy has worked for Tesla to inflate the stock price and get investors to pay up for the stock price in anticipation of these products that might be coming out into the future. Tesla said, uh, Elon Musk saying that we do expect to roll out ride hailing in California and Texas next year to the public. California somewhere, the regulatory process might be difficult, but they think they will get regulatory approval to test. Test. Remember, they're still going to begin testing next year. Hopefully. Now, that's not for certain. Now, Tesla also saying that they published their Q3 vehicle safety report, which shows one crash for every 7 million miles of autopilot. And that compares to the U.S. average of one crash for roughly every 700,000 miles. So according to Tesla's data that they're sharing with you, they're trying to convince you that their full self-driving, supervised self-driving is more safe than human drivers. But I think this is a little bit insincere, the data, because if, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tesla's FSD supervised can only be engaged in favorable weather conditions. So if it's raining or if there's a lot of fog or if the sun is too bright or if there's some construction going on on the streets, it won't engage or it will ask the human to take over. And so in the most dangerous circumstances or on the dangerous, on the more dangerous side of miles driven, FSD is not engaged. So it's only engaged in the safest of safe miles driven, whereas human drivers are driving in all of those conditions. So I don't think it's fair to compare it in that way, but it does make Tesla look better, which is the CEO's job, right? It's the CEO's job to present the company in a more favorable light. So it's understandable that the CEO will present the data in this fashion, but I, I want to frame it in a way that gives more information to investors to look at it with more equilibrium glasses, not looking at it on the one-sided friendly case for Tesla. All right, and here's that shocking comment from Elon Musk that I was talking about saying that, I think we will, my prediction is, Tesla will become the most valuable company in the world and probably by a long shot. The most valuable company in the world and probably by a long shot. And if you're a Tesla stock investor, you've got to be really happy with the great lengths that the company's CEO goes to, to make sure or to try and keep that stock price elevated. Tesla works really hard on the stock price and more so on the stock price than on the company's actual results in delivering the products and the technologies that they promise. But that's worked well, as I shared with you earlier. Look at Tesla's valuation. It's trading more expensively, and you can look at various financial metrics. It's trading more expensively than 
nearly all of its peers. And even if you put it into another category like artificial intelligence, which it's nowhere near an AI company just yet, maybe five years from now, it will be generating AI revenues from driverless cars, technology, and other such things. But right now, you know, 90, 95% of the company's revenue is coming outside of artificial intelligence. So even though it's not even close yet to becoming an AI company, it's being valued more expensively than companies like NVIDIA, which is an AI company today, today and last year, right? It already generated so much revenue from artificial intelligence technology, but still Tesla's trading at a more expensive valuation, more than twice that of NVIDIA. So whatever this strategy is, from Tesla's management team is working and it's working very well. However, eventually Tesla stock price could trade at a reasonable valuation where it's trading where the company's fundamentals suggest that it should. And when that happens or if that happens, that could be a huge shock to Tesla stock investors who see the company, who will see the company come back down to reality. Now that might never happen, but there is a likelihood that it could happen given that most businesses trade at their intrinsic value. There are rare cases like this with Tesla where the company's price gets disentangled or gets disconnected from its tangible results, but those are typically not the norm. These are just situations outside of the norm. Hey everyone, so many of you have been asking about my investing strategy and I'm excited to announce that I've written a book that's available for sale now that describes my six step invest investing framework for evaluating stocks. I've added the link in the description below.